What's up, y'all? We back. We finna go right back into it. So, while I'm, um, damn, there's I ain't even gonna edit that out. Anyway, while I'm sitting here feeling like I'm feeling, like I'm feeling, um, it made me think of something. Really, I had already planned on talking about some of this, but let me give y'all this part. I remember I used to be locked up smoking weed, and I would get so paranoid. Now, listen to me. I don't care if I'm in an open barracks, in a cell block barracks, or on max behind the door, locked down behind the cell or whatever. Once I start smoking this weed, I am super paranoid, and I hate it. To the point where every time I smoke, I'm like, well, I ain't smoking no more up in prison. I ain't smoking a joint no more. So, it's like I could be sitting there blowing. And I'm sitting in my seat. I have my, uh, my curtain up. You know what I'm saying? Baby powder in the air. Got my wick blowing, uh, burning with, with the scent on it. And I break all that down for y'all. But, um, my will break it down now. So, when I'm smoking and I got my cell like this, the cell bars is only gonna be like a doorway wide. So I'll take my sheet and we have a string up there that we'll tie a wedge into the doorway frame on both sides with a little knot or something. A real thin string. That way when you're using the bathroom or you getting your one or whatever you're doing where you want some privacy, you go throw that sheet up. Sometimes the guard gonna reach in there and move it anyway. Or sometimes they just gonna like, hey, you in there? You like, yeah, I'm in here. What you doing? I'm using the bathroom or whatever. You know what I'm saying? They gonna be like, all right. So you put your sheet up, and basically you start taking all the stuff like you in the hotel or something about to smoke. So you got your vent blowing, and when I say your wick, what we're doing on the wick is we'll take toilet paper, like right? straight toilet paper, put it on the table, take wet deodorant stick like a speed stick, up and down that. Up and down that junk. Thing is, that got scent. So when you burn it, it smells like the deodorant. Then it also makes the toilet paper last a little bit longer while it's burning. It burns slower because it's a little bit damp. But what you do is you twist that up real tight. It's like a real line, a rope. Kind of like a hemp rope. But you twist it up real tight. And then if you got a lighter, you either set it on fire or you get some somebody to go set it on fire before you bring it back. And you put it in your vent the way your vent is, it's like a, a square. This the vent over the toilet, not the vent you be talking to. Well, you talk to this vent too, but it's different. This vent is like a square, and it's got real little pencil holes in it, like pencil that just stabbed it. So, you stick that, that wick in there and let that burn. And either it'll be sucking the smoke into it, or it'll just be blowing the scent out in the room. Either way it go, it's beneficial. Whether it's sucking in or blowing out, you're going to get the benefit. But, also the baby powder, you know what I'm saying, keeping a little fresh, throwing them off. They, you know what smell the baby powder, they assume you might be in there using the bathroom. Because they used to, boom. So, now, other than that, there ain't too much you can do. But, I'll be in there, have my headphones on, nigga want to listen to some music. Now, if you got the right kind of like R30s or something, you can take them headphone speakers and put them in a cup with a magnifier so you have that sitting on your table. Uh, and then you got your headphones on, but when you're smoking, you don't want your headphones on for obvious reasons. So I'm paranoid. I'm smoking. I'm bumping the music. And no matter what they're saying after it, I can't really make it out because I'm just my music and shit, but it sounds like they talking about me. Now, it's a hundred some people in this bird. Ain't nobody concerned about me. We all in one man's cell, locked down. Can't nobody get to nobody. What are they going to be discussing me for? I don't know, but when I be smoking, they discussing me something. Cut the music off. They they heard me cut the music off. Now they want to talk about something else. Cut my music. What the nigga say? You gonna do what when they go to the shower? Man, you know what I'm saying? So. It just get to a point where it's like, I ain't going to lie. It always got to one where I'm like, I ain't smoking no more in this joint. I ain't smoking no more in prison. As soon as niggas smoke weed, I'm smoking. 
That's what I do. I smoke weed. So, um, debt. Now, another thing is, it be times in prison where you look around and you smiling. And you might not say it out loud. You know what I'm saying? You enjoying yourself. You laughing. Somebody might be, you know what I'm saying? Y'all spreading. And somebody kicking one of them old school stores or something. Or they telling about back in the day. And everybody's paying attention. It's funny. You laughing. Y'all just kicking it. Having a good time. You know what I'm saying? And for a second, you done got out of this prison. You, you know what I'm saying? Your mind is free. So, you was able to enjoy yourself. But then, once you blink, you start seeing these gray bricks and shit again. You start feeling guilty. Like I promise you, you start feeling guilty about having a smile on your face, about having enjoyment in yourself. And sometimes you'll be to the point like, man, look, bro, I'm locked up, but I ain't dead, bro. So you're not going to sit here and think I'm just going to have bad day after bad day after bad day and be, man, that's how people end up killing themselves in here. And that's for real. Like when you get to the point where you can't enjoy yourself, you can't find nothing to smile about. You can't find nothing to be happy about. Then you get to that point where it's like it's all just dreadful and despair. Man, everybody not built for that. Everybody can't take that. You know what I'm saying? Them thoughts to be playing in your head. I know how it is because I deal with depression. So I know how it feel when it seems like every thought you have is something negative. When you need to remember all the bad stuff that ever happened to you in your life. Man, that right there, that's a hell of a thing to deal with, depression. But I'm going to tell you, like, it's a female I had in my life, and I love her for this reason, but I don't fuck with her no more. Man, I had, I was messing with, this is the thing about it. At the time, I felt like I was elevating myself by even getting with her. Like, I, you know what I'm saying? She was a, I had her on a pedestal, you know what I'm saying? And I treated her as such. So, myself, I'm riding around, you know what I'm saying? I got the, the 500 beans. I got the good job. I lost my job. Damn. I'm still messing with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm still in the beans. We go out to eat one day. As we leave in the restaurant, the beans are, they start grinding. I'm like, what the hell? So I'm like, damn, I dropped her off at the crib. I'm like, man, look, let's go park this car so I can find out what's going on. I ain't even make it to the house after I dropped off. I ain't even make it to the house. So, I'm like, damn, I got the car towed to my homeboy house because it was closer to my crib. I shoot onto the crib. Now, at the time, that was the only vehicle I had. So, of course, it's like, shit, I ain't got no way to get to you. I really had to stop calling. All that. I wasn't even calling the girl no more. So, about a week go by, and I'm sitting here in the house depressed. I'm like, man... Feeling bad for myself, no transportation, no no motion, no car, no nothing, no job. And I get a phone call from her, and she like, "Feel baby, what's up?" I'm like, "Shit, what's what's good?" And she like, "Look, um, I know you be going through depression, and you be doing all this, and you be feeling all this, and I know you lost your car, and I know you lost your job, but you don't get to just quit talking to me." You don't get to quit coming around here and uh, being around me and all this and that. What you think? And I'm like, in my head, I'm thinking, man, don't no woman want to be around no nigga. Ain't got no damn car. Ain't got no damn job. I just lost all that shit. And I'm expecting because of the females I done dealt with in the past that that shit was basically the over with or on hold. But she was like, no, sir, nigga, you don't get to just leave me alone like that. I don't give a damn what you going through. Bring your ass here. Depression was over with right there. I snapped out of that shit, put some clothes on, let me shaved up, and, and, and caught a ride to her house. Man, look, the bounce back came, you know what I'm saying? I didn't feel like many times, but I always bounce back harder. I'm doing better now than I ever did. So, everything is still true to form. Now, I don't want to fall off again just to get better. I'm trying to get them perfect that way. I ain't got to do it like that. But, um, shit, it is what it is. Like I say, right now I'm doing better than ever, so I can't really complain. Um, but yeah, it be times when you in prison, man, where you actually feel bad because you didn't caught yourself in good spirits. 
You can catch yourself smiling. You can catch yourself laughing or joking or playing around. And then you get to thinking like, man, what the fuck? Man, I'm in prison, bro. What the fuck I'm happy about? Like, I like this shit. And it ain't the fact that you like this shit. It's the fact that, nigga, your life ain't over. And you can't just sit here and be depressed and down on the dumps all day. That's how you end up fucked up. A nigga go from having three years to having 30 years. 30 years to having 103 years. You know what I'm saying? A lot of shit in prison gonna be mental. You got to, you know what I'm saying? As time go on, you will learn how to deal with certain situations. But from the jump, just know, man. Keep your emotions in check. Everybody go through shit and everything, you know what I'm saying, you're going to break down. But I'm going to tell you some real shit. Like, this is just me personally. If I ever found myself in a situation, man, where I just needed to go cry. You think I'm going to sit here and cry in front of any one of these niggas in prison? <laughs> Hell no. I'm going to the shower. Jump my ass in the shower. Let this steam steam up. Dip my head in the water. And then I'm going to start crying and let this shit out. Come my homeboy and died. Us kids got damn me some bullshit that happened. You know what I'm saying? Little sister had a wreck. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Any damn thing, you never know what it is. But you just can't, you just can't let everybody in on what's going on with your outside life. Because the motherfucker will find a way to use that against you. Like, I promise you. I keep telling you, it's prison. Motherfucker got nothing but time. They done tried it a thousand times with people before you, and they done perfected it. So when your turn come, it ain't really nothing you're going to do, bro. You gonna, If you're dumb, you're going to fall into the trap. It's a mind game. I'm trying to tell you it's a mind game. Listen to me. I done seen people get beat up. I ain't even talking about jump, just beat up. I done seen them get beat up. And get his stuff took. So when the next time a person come through and they want to take his stuff, it might be a smaller person, somebody he can whoop. I'm talking about somebody he can really whoop. No problem. Could slap this dude and he be on the floor. But this little dude to come through there and get to going through his stuff in his face and tell him I'm taking this. Man, get my stuff. Why you sit your bitch ass down? You gonna jump up on me like you ain't jump... You ain't jump up on dude taking your shit last time you went to the store. Nah, yeah, nigga don't bump on me. You know what I'm saying? Nigga will tell you you a bitch. And it's up for you to know that no, I'm not. Nigga I ain't never been a bitch. I wasn't a bitch when I got here. I'm not a bitch when I leave. I'm not going to be a bitch none of the time in between. Whatever you got to do, you know what I'm saying? But it's a mind game. A dude will try to convince you that you're not about to do nothing to him. Because you ain't do nothing to the last person. Bro, you did do something to the last person. You just got your ass whooped. You see what I'm saying? Uh, even if you didn't do it. What day can a man tell you that, hey, bro, you can't fight back? No, you got me fucked up. What you gonna do? Whoop me? You got to. You got to. Because if I don't fight now, you feel gonna whoop me anyway. But you're not gonna whoop me for free. You're not going to take my manhood. You're not going to take my reputation. You're not going to take none of that shit from me, bro. You might whoop me. Can you whoop me again? Can you whoop me three times? Can you whoop me four times? Well, shit, nigga, can you whoop me five? I'm just saying. Can't nobody tell you when to stop fighting for yourself, for your reputation, for your hind parts, for your commissary, for your intellectual property, none of that, bro. It's on you. You fight until you can't fight no more. I'm going to tell you, like when I, I told y'all when I got uh, moved to the other birds, and I ran a little toot from Pine Bluff. Little toot told me one day, he was like, bro, when I'm fighting nigga, I ain't worried about nothing. If he break my leg, well, nigga, I got two legs. You got to break them both. If you break my arm, nigga, I got two arms. You got to break them both. You can poke my eye out, nigga, I got two arms. You got to get them both. But I still got teeth. I'm going to bite your ass. All right, nigga, I'm going to keep fighting until I can't fight no more, bro. Yeah, that's just simply plain. When I'm done fighting, I ain't going to have nothing to feel bad about. It ain't going to be nothing nobody can say about me no matter what happened. As long as I'm fighting, 
Time can't fight no more. It ain't shit Nick can say. And I felt that. And I'm like, man, you're right. You know what I'm saying? Now, it might not be a situation where you got to get both of your legs, broke your arm, broke eyes, hooked out, teeth knocked out, all that shit. But what I'm saying is, don't let no motherfucker tell you that you can't defend yourself. Don't let nobody make you feel like you can't defend yourself. Like, bro, I don't care. <coughs> I don't care. If you is five foot two and it's a nigga cartoon size. You not gonna win, bro. You ain't gonna win. I promise you not gonna win. Not fighting nobody that big. But fighting him, I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna do. You're gonna get respect. Not just from him, but from everybody else around. And what I mean by that is, if dude run up on you talking this shit, and you swing on him, you might not know it, but it might be 20 niggas sitting right over there just like, Bruh, dude ain't no bitch. So we not fit to let dude turn him into no bitch. Slide over there. Hey, bro, cartoon, get up off of him. You, nah, bro, get up off of him. And that's just how it be. But if you sitting over there doing this, man, them dudes over there going to look and laugh at you. Now it's the show. Whatever happened to your head. You know, you wasn't a man from the jump. Ain't nobody really running around helping the boys. But they help the man. He need help. He's small, but he's still a dude. Like when I was telling y'all about the kind of drill, little Coco. Dude was small as I don't know what, bro. But he wasn't nobody bitch. He wasn't going to be nobody bitch. He's a little bitty motherfucker, but he wasn't no bitch at all. Now, well, we was talking about the, uh, how you be feeling when you smoke Feeling guilty about, yeah, all that. That's mess, That's the messed up part, bro. Like, when I say feeling guilty, I mean, like, you really, you really feel guilty. Like, just imagine you wake up at 6 o'clock and you look at the long clock and it's 6 o'clock. But you were supposed to pick your mama up from work at 5.30. And then you look at your phone. And this month on silent. But you got like 42 missed calls. 17 text messages. All from your mom. The way you feel right then. That's how a dude be feeling when he catch himself having fun or smiling or enjoying himself or laughing or kicking it too hard. When you locked up. It ain't a good feeling. It's, it's conflicting. It's a catch 22. But it just go to say like it happened. I'm gonna tell you like, and it might be a slave mentality how a slave used to brag about his master. Uh, my master got this. Or my master got this. Or we got this many acres. Or my master got this many slaves. He got this many horses. You know what I'm saying? So it's like things we used to brag about in prison like. On the weekend, starting on Friday, we do movie call. So, they always showing us up the up-to-date movies when I was locked up. I'm talking about we get the bootlegs. Some shit could drop Friday. We'd be watching it Saturday morning when we wake up. I mean, it been, I'm going to tell you one movie I missed. I woke up. And uh, it was going off. Torque with Ice Cube. Where he was uh, driving a motorcycle. So it was that. And I'm like, man. And soon, I think as soon as they was going off, like, Biker Boys was coming on. And I was like, what? Bro, these movies just came to the movie just like last night. Like, shit, man, these the bootlegs. He going to record this shit last night. The movie bought these bootlegs last night. I'm like, damn. Then we be in the country town. So we like, man, yeah, we, we be up on it. And we be watching movies, movies all weekend. You know what I'm saying? I'm talking about movies that start playing at about 6, 7 o'clock at night on a Friday night. And they wouldn't stop playing until probably about 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, Monday morning. All the up-to-date movies, all the good movies. 
So that's the only way we're going to be seeing some, some nudity or some sex scenes or something. We're watching movie every weekend. We have about 30 movies from the max, about 30 movies out in population. They just be switching out, but really be movie called it every unit. That was it. For some reason, and this just being real, for some reason, I cannot remember a movie called at Newport. But Newport was one of them units that was so dangerous where you really wasn't, you wasn't going to chill too long and just watch TV. I can't imagine us sitting in them birds in Newport with all the lights off and everybody just sitting there eating, spreading, focus on, on this box. Like, nah, that wasn't even the type of unit what we were doing. I don't remember no movie call over there. If it was, I just wasn't watching the movies. But, uh, that, I'm trying to think, man. It was something else I wanted to talk to y'all about. One more time. Okay, I say this. I got a homegirl. And I'm going to tell the story about my interaction with her brother and her mother. Because both of them was, was two people that uh was real cool. Her mama was like an OG in the city where I met since I was a kid. Like, she was always in tune with the streets and the youngsters and she kept us I ain't gonna say she kept us out of trouble but she provided opportunities for us to have fun without us getting in trouble you know what I'm saying she would open her home up to all the gangsters I'm talking about like not just when I say gangsters I ain't talking about like folks with GDs and OBDs and nothing like that I'm talking about just street niggas gang members no matter what hood you were from you could end up at her house at a party and it, it was rules and everybody by by them rules and there wasn't ever no BS so I'll tell y'all a story when I did get into some bullshit. And, you know what I'm saying, she was there. And that's when I bun really just. And I ain't even know we had built a bun like that till years later. Years later. But she became somebody special to me, man. And she passed. But her daughter reached out to me. And she going through some tough times with her mama passing. And her brother passing. And her other brother passing. All in like a inside of a one month period. All of them died different ways. Some violent, some not. But what I'm trying to do with her is because you gotta think about y'all. She she going through it. Like she lost both of her brothers and her mother back to back to back. Like. It's rocking the mother and the brother and her when they lost the baby brother. So two weeks later when the mama died, you know what I'm saying? When Pookie died, that, that was a shock. It really was, we, Pookie was sick, but we didn't expect her to be going like that. And then when my dude Pac-Man died a couple weeks after his mama and his brother, it just, man, it's a lot. So what I want is, I want her to start a YouTube page. I'm going to bring her, I'm going to talk about her story, and I'm going to bring her on here, and I'm going to let her talk about it and tell y'all what, what's going on and what she's going through. And people can come from my page and go to her page and talk to her and listen to her stories because I want her to be able to have a place where she can vent, you know what I'm saying, and talk about this stuff and go, I, you know what I'm saying, I don't, I like to help people, but I don't know what to say. I don't know what to tell them. It hurt me. You know what I'm saying? I was looking through my phone yesterday, and I'm looking at the last messages me and her brother were sending from each other, and we from two different hoods. But it was always a mutual respect since we was kids because he was a real dude. And I was telling him about some music him and his family be doing, and I was just letting him know, like, bro, what it was, and he heard some shit I was doing. And he was telling me it, it, it was fine. And he was like, man, I'm for real. I'm not just playing with you. And I was like, that's what's up. And I let him like, man, we ain't really had no differences, but I know we ain't the, the best of friends, man. But I be keeping up with what you got going on. And I'm proud of you, you know what I'm saying? Even when I was in prison, when I was hearing about what y'all had going on, I was proud of you. And it's like, man, I'm just like, half of the people in the city 
wouldn't even believe me if I told them men do hair interactions like that. I got receipts. I could show them. You know what I'm saying? I could prove it. It's nothing. But I'm just saying, if I told them, I would have to show them receipts. People wouldn't believe that. So, I've been talking to her, and I'm going to get her on here, man, so she can tell her story. And I'm going to help her start a page. Because I, I just can't imagine her not having nobody to talk to about this. And I know the way y'all encourage me, man. I know the way y'all uplift me and, and keep me going. And I just want her to have somebody in her corner like that. You know what I'm saying? I want somebody to listen to what she got to say, to hear her, to understand, or to not understand, but still listen. You know what I'm saying? Somebody just to be there. And then on time, at the same time, I know that it could help a lot of other people listening to her story. I mean, she got a worse story than, than a lot of people, but it's a lot of people with, with, with stories similar to hers. You know what I'm saying? Or whatnot. And I hate to keep bringing it up. What 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 one of y'all told me. I'm not going to say the details no more. But it's like that type of stuff right there, man. When I say it touched me for real, it touched me for real. Like, man, I don't just hear that type of stuff and, and let it go in one ear and not the other. I always been that type of person. Like, bro, my mama the same way. People come to me out the blue. I ain't never met these people. I ain't none of that. And they will sit there and tell me their whole life story. They will tell me things that they ain't never told nobody. And I used to just be uncomfortable with it. Like, why are you telling me this? Like, bro, I don't want to hold your secrets. I don't want to know this stuff. I don't know where you bury these bodies at. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know how much other stuff floating around in my head I got to deal with. Other than just your sh So... Man, when I bring her on here, y'all just embrace it and listen to her, man. And, you know what I'm saying? If you feel her pain, if you feel like you can help her or talk to her, or you feel like she can help you or talk to you, then, you know what I'm saying, just subscribe to her channel and do what you do. So, is that, I'm thinking about my homeboy, man. Uh, one of my little brothers I be telling y'all about, DJ, this man that turned himself into a bodybuilder. You know what I'm saying? This man that turned himself into a bodybuilder. He young, he just, you know what I'm saying, early 30s. But um, he went from bean pole to a bodybuilder. And I'm talking about like in the last month and a half. So what I'm thinking is I need to get back on mine. So I need to let him train me. Do it on my channel. Move it over to his channel. So if y'all want to work out with him or y'all want to, you know what I'm saying, have y'all a partner, you know what I'm saying? Because it's always easier when you're working out with somebody. And we ain't always got nobody that's going to work out with us. That's why I told him, like, bro, you start your channel and be a virtual workout partner. You can work out with these people online. They can watch your videos and do their Tuesday workout. Watch your videos and do their Wednesday workout. The meal plan and all this stuff you be doing. Either way, I'm just saying, I need to get him to build my body. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling him, bro, I want to look like I'm fresh out. Not just like I'm fresh out of breath. She, your boy got some things to do. You know what I'm saying? I, I want that little line right here. I need some more cuff right here. You see these? Yeah, I need to get them bigger. I need a pack down here. Not, not what I got. Don't worry about that. You know what I'm saying? Swell on up like I used to be. Get back to it. But uh, as long as I won't get ready in this video, man, I might drop y'all something else tonight. If not. Most definitely tomorrow, man. Like I said, I appreciate what you've been doing, so I'm going to go hard for you. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to go hard for you. Uh, I reached out to my boy, uh, Cartoon, man, and I heard back from him. He told me, keep grinding, keep hustling. You know what I'm saying? That's what he told me. So that's what we got to do. Not only that, but he surprised me when I got at him, and he told me, he was like, yeah, I saw you the other day. I saw you the other day. And I was like, I worry you, you seen the shit. You see me put it down. You know, I put it down. So, man, look, we finna just keep it going. And we gonna keep it going the long way, not the wrong way. The end. For now.